uh, again the same stuff we have we can download things from here uh, <coughs> give me one second so this part again I have done it go to a, basically one thing that I would say is when I was playing around with HBase I went to a different directory and uh, it failed so go to the stable directory and that will give you make sure that whatever you are downloading is stable untar it um, I mean extract it out make sure your uh, bash profile or environment variable includes the path variable includes HBase home uh, so now we will execute these commands and see how far we can go this. So here you don't have to create any directories like we have to create in knife. Basically untar it, put it in path and I think uh, Adobe should be running anyway. So we will try to <laughs> execute these three commands. HBase, uh, start HBase and HBase shell. So, This basically lists all the uh, commands that I can run using HBase. Now the next thing I'll run is I'll start HBase. Okay, so I guess I already had start had it starting, so my HBase is started. So. Um, to start writing, uh, we'll just try to create a table and do things with it. So, to start uh, using the base shell, we just need to execute this base shell command. So now we are in the base uh, shell. Now what we'll do is we'll try to just uh, try to create a table called table one and with a column with a single column family called data. So this data is nothing but a column family that I'm predefining when I'm creating a table. So this basically is a DDL command that I'm data definition language command that I'm trying to run. Let's run this. Back into the shell, uh, we'll say, I think I'll better type it because whenever I'm This doesn't require a semicolon unlike your SQL. So there is a table created. To view that table here, we'll do a list. This will list all the tables in the user space. So there is another table called first, uh, which is something that I created earlier, and there is a table one that we created right now. Now what we'll try to do is we'll try to add some big data into this table. So we'll execute this command. Hopefully this copy paste will work. Insert table. So there is something. So let me type it out. What I'm saying is put into the table, table 1, create a row called row 1 and they basically this notation is important so let me type it out in the next So what this line does is for the table, put data in table 1 as row 1. For the column family, column family data, which we defined here, assign a value of value 1 to the column 1. So data colon 1 basically means column family colon column. So my column family is data which is predefined and I am creating a column here on the slide and I am inserting the data with the 
label. It's called a label, not a name. So the label of the column is one, and its value is value one. So we'll uh, execute this. It's executed. So what we'll do is we'll add two more things. We'll say row two data two value two. I hope it's clear. I mean, uh, I just trying to add two more rows. This way. So, row one, row two, and row three. Now, I want to read back this table. So, I'll just say scan table one. So, scan table one. So, uh, this if you this is a good thing to see. So, we are we have three rows as we added. Row one, row two, row three. Now the column plus cell combination is column is data colon one. So a column is identified by its column family and its label. The column family is data and its label is one. So data one. Now as I was speaking about, there is versioning in HBase. So all the data is versioned. So HBase automatically puts the system automatically puts a timestamp uh, to this data value one. I'm sure this timestamp is, uh, you know, the number of milliseconds since 1970, first year or something, uh, which is the epoch time, and it puts a timestamp of for each of the cells, basically. So every piece of data has a timestamp. So then, um, now I suppose I want to remove this table. I have to disable it, drop it, and then I can do all of that. So let's do that. First, I have to disable it to. Okay, I don't have test. I think it's a mistake. So it's table one. So now I have to drop it. So I have dropped the table. To check whether my table exists or not, I just do a list, and I don't see my table. Here. So the last time I did list, I had first and table. So now we can stop HBase using stop hbase.sh, which is a daemon um, available in the HBase uh, bin directory. Um, yeah, who uses HBase? We had we have all these big giants: Adobe, StumbleUpon, Twitter, Yahoo, Facebook, uh, many more. Uh, but these are the big guys who use HBase. Some resources. And uh, that same book is pretty good for HBase and I both. You know, I found it pretty useful. There is Hadoop in action also, which is good examples for HBase and I to get started. So obviously all of this, was, I was running on a single, uh, single data node. It was not running on a distributed setup, but that can be done. Uh, but for demonstration purposes and you know, trainings, it's better to run it on a single node. Um, this particular Link is very good to understand how data is organized in HBase. I mean, it helped me understand it pretty well when I was going through it like one, one year back. Um, please go through this link. Uh, we'll, this is one of the best blogs about HBase. Simply put, how column family is all, I and mean, what does sparse mean and all that. This help you a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. Are there any questions or anything uh, we can discuss it? Some of them can be discussed now, or we can shoot a mail to Vishikravayat at Gmail. I can help you figure out the answer. <laughs>